Hey everyone, it's Mike Valtos, and this is part two of the order flows market analysis for September 7, 2017. The, uh, talk about the second half of the session. You got a nice rally in the S&Ps. Um, even though we closed a little bit lower for the day, um, you know, we did have a, a nice late rally off the lows. Uh, gold, gold continues to, uh, keep moving up. We're up another, uh, 1%, 1.1% today. Oil is around 49 bucks as, uh, this Hurricane Irma starts uh, taking aim at Florida and the Gulf as well. And the Euro, the Euro is back over 120. Um, we traded, uh, I think, up to uh, 120, 21. There was uh, no action from the ECB, and you know, which is keeping the stimulus in place. So that said, let's uh, just jump into things again. You know, the disclaimer, this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trade contains substantial risk and it's not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Again, same tools as always. The uh, order flows trader volume footprint chart, the delta scalper, which is uh, an order flow tool. And I do, lately I've been talking a bit more about the, the price rejector. I'll probably talk about that again today. Um, you know, these are Delta Scalper and Price Rejector are two additional tools in order flow. Uh, additional indicators outside of the order flows trader. They sell separately. They do work on normal bar charts in case, you know, you're not really up to speed yet on trading with order flow. So, Let's uh, just sort of pick up where we left off. Okay, so this is crude. Um, crude right now, so what time is it now? It's one in the morning, Chicago time. Crude not doing much, very tight range in the evening session. Again, we're trading 49.12 here. But, uh, you know what, I can't remember what time I, I did that recording. It was around 11, I think. But anyway, you know, we had this little sell-off from, yeah, I remember talking about this in the morning sessions. So you had that sell-off. You get down here, 10.54. This move actually was very quick. 10.54, you, you sold off. You know, about 30 cents. You hit this area here. You got some small deltas, 37.14. You've seen some buying coming in. You got, you got the up bars. This bar point of control right on the, towards the bottom. It starts rallying up here. kind of goes sideways. And again, we're just hanging around this yellow line, which is the unchanged price level, 49 bucks. Now, you remember earlier I was talking about, if, if you remember, we did rally up off the lows. We came right up here where you had the price rejected and it sold off. You know, on days where you're really lacking direction, you tend to rotate around opening price. That doesn't mean you're going to be trading, you know, 49.14 for two hours. No, you're going to go above, you're going to go below like you're doing here, right? You're above, you get down below, you got an you know, indication to sell up here or buy down here, you know, just in here, some small deltas. You know, trade is evenly matched. You know, buyers and sellers are evenly matched. That's what the small deltas are telling you. Um, you know, when, when buyers or sellers are, are matched, you know, we have delta of 14 that tells you, you know, net aggressive buying was 14. So that tells you the volume was 2486, but buying and selling was, was pretty even. Um, so we sold off. Okay. We sold off again, you know, down to, uh, one o'clock this area. And you know, nothing really major. You come down here again, you know, every time you sort of dip below, this area, you, you get, you know, buyers and sellers evenly matched. Again, you see it down here. You got some small deltas, 80, 92. Honestly, you know, you're coming down here. You, you, you got, you know, strong sellers, right? Look at these deltas, 700, 700, 700, a bunch of imbalances. So, you know, there's net aggressive selling here, okay? Now, but then what happens is you just start going sideways. You get this one bar, a nice positive delta. So, buyers are stepping up. And you came in here, so you had sellers, net aggressive sellers. You know, think about this for a second. You got market going down. I'm talking with my hands. You can't see me. I'm talking with my hands. I'm pointing down. You know, you have this market coming down. A net aggressive sellers, very strong, 700, 700, 700 in the delta. That's how you know it's net aggressive sellers. And it's quite strong by the number. You, know, you got these imbalances, 135, 80, 89, 161, 91, 157. You get down here. You get down to below 49 bucks. What happens? Now you got aggressive buying coming in, net aggressive buying. So above, at this time, you know, above 49 bucks, you got net aggressive selling. You get below 49 bucks, you got net aggressive buying. And then what happens? You start trading right around 49 bucks over the next few bars here, next two bars, and you got small deltas. You're trading 3,900, you're trading 5,000. So, you know, this is about 9,000 contracts if you add up the volume of these two bars. And your delta is basically minus 100 and what is that, 170. 
Okay, minus 80 here, or bar that trades 3,900, minus 92 on a bar you trade 5,000. You know, those are small deltas. So it's telling you these sellers are meeting buyers down here. Okay, they're trading, they're happy to trade at this price level. You know, so it sort of found this new area to trade at. You know, that's that's what the market is telling you in the order flow. You get down here and you have the buyers. The buyers are stepping up. Then here you got the Delta Scalper kicking in and is telling you, hey, you know what, net aggressive buyers are taking over. Do you really rally? Not really. You sort of rally back up towards this opening price, 49.14. You end up closing the day up in here around 49.20. Well, no, I'll say 20. You got down to, what was the closing price? 49.10. It's just here. You know, after you got the Delta Scalper telling you the buyers came in. Yeah, in the evening session, you did pop up. But right now, you know, very tight range, 26 down to, uh, oh, was that, 07. So basically a 19 tick range in the evening session. So kind of quiet right now in the evening session coming into Friday. Uh, I didn't talk about the 10 range e minis. I honestly, I, I didn't look at them that much today. I know, I know I spent some time looking at the, uh, at the five range, but yeah, you know, and anything you know, really major takeaway? No, the same thing that you saw in in the, in the morning. You're really just sort of hanging around, you know, the opening price right here, twenty four sixty three and a quarter. Uh, most of this, most of the session, you know, even you, you do sell off, make a new low here around eleven something, eleven forty, um, and you start rally. What do you rally back up? You rally back up to the sixty three and a quarter um, in the evening session. You know, we did pop up before Asia opened, but we did uh, sell off and we're just right on our lows here, about 130 right now. So again, I'm curious, you know, we're coming into the European session, the European cash opened in about uh, 30 minutes. I'd be curious to see if we get a bounce up, you know, if this is this low is going to hold. It's not a ratio. We do have a divergence though, but right now you got one divergence, another divergence, although this is at 845. This next one's at 130. That's so a long time. That's the problem. I say problem. That's one of the things you got to keep in context you know when you're trading the Asian chess and sometimes it's boring as watching paint dry you know from 845 to 1145 this is it in one bar that's how that's how quiet it is um you know, nothing you know, too excited in here I said you the four range looks better than this um than this uh, 10 range I mean yeah you do have a ratio here a price rejector giving you this buy right on the sell which is also nice um, but again, not much of a move up. You know, you're only talking to move about uh, two or three points. That's about it. Um, kind of a quiet, quiet afternoon, quiet, uh, you know, after 12. But again, you know, I want to show you that. I, I, I was debating whether I should even make this video. Um, you know, because then people say, oh, you know, he didn't make a video because order flow sucked in the afternoon and he would have lost all your money. But uh, no, you know, it's, I'm, I'm making it anyway. Um, it was an interesting thing here on the low. That you don't see on the uh, 10 range chart because on, on the four range it's split over two bars here 1136 1137 i had touched on this i had talked about this earlier on the, on the previous video and again i always like it when you get less volume the second time you're coming into a low and 36 15 yeah it, technically it's less i mean there's just you're only talking uh what is that 19 contracts less but still it's it's less I, I do I do like that when you hit the, the low test a high or test a low again you got less volume it's to me it's always a nice sign that uh, prices or you know in this case sellers are not as interested in selling into the lows you know even here 939 versus 361 2000 here only 515 so the second time you're coming down second time you're coming down into this low where are your aggressive sellers that you had earlier you know, it's, you're seeing less, you know, 2,000 against 500, you know, that's, this is one-fourth less. 939 against 369, this is a third less. And 36 against 15, that's, you know, that's half less. So there's less, there's less interest in selling into the slow. And what do you do? You got price rejector again, giving you the, the buy that you saw in the 10 range as well. You get a little bit of a move up here. You get the price delta scalper coming in, giving you a sell. Um, but it, you know, point of control holds here. That's this line here. Rallies back up, you know, gets back up to that opening price. So, you know, realistically, out of this trade, you know, if you can get, you know, up, up two points, that would be great. But again, you know, my target, optimistic target is just 63 and a quarter. So, you know, assuming you're getting long in here somewhere around, I don't know, 60 and a half, 60 and three quarters, you know, to get out at, at 60, you know, above 63 is, is great. But again, you know, 
on days where there's it's kind of directionless, you're going to hang around the opening price. Here you get the, uh, again, this is uh, just before 2 o'clock. You get the stack selling imbalance. What do you get right afterwards? You get a bullish ratio right here, 76. And, you know, that's not a good sign. You got a nice bearish sign here. And then you got a bullish sign. That's that's not what you want. You want a bearish sign to follow your initial bearish sign. Then you just sort of hang around in here. One bar, two bars, three bars, four bars. By this point here, you're looking at this bearish ratio, 170.3. And you're thinking, hey, we should start selling off. But what happens? You rally right back up into the area of the stacked imbalance. So it's it's four levels. You're or sorry, you know, four bars after this initial imbalance. And you're just trading back in there. At this point, it's really losing its effectiveness. Now, I'm not going to say, oh, yeah, you see, it sold off. No. By this point, I'm looking to get out, especially when it pokes up, you know, it starts trading above it. You know, here, yeah, it only traded nine. But, you know, at that time, you, know, you got to realize what's happening. You see this market start poking higher, trading, you know, uh, 64, 64 and a quarter, 64 and a half. It could very, I'll say it can very well have easily gone higher, but it could have gone higher. In this case, it didn't. It sold off again. But, you know, really, you're expecting this trade to happen, you know, the move to happen sooner. But the first sign that it's not going to really work out is this. I'm not looking as this as a level, you know, to hold all day long. I know some people like to. I, I don't. To me, this is a, a sign. <coughs> aggressive selling is coming in. And, you know, 30 minutes later, that aggressive selling, the whole point of it, said you rally back up here and here. Um, you know, 10 minutes later, I want to see more aggressive selling. Okay, you got a couple imbalances, but then you rally back up in there. You know, at this point, you know, where is it? The aggressive selling is not strong enough. And the only the other thing to take away is you're trading right around your opening price. And again, going back to what I said, you know, when it's a directionless market, quiet a quiet market, you tend to hang around the opening price. So, you know, the fact that it's happening right above the opening price, and you can't really sell off. It's just telling me this market's directionless. Again, you know, I'm not going to say, yeah, let's see, it sold off here. You'd cover down here at 61 and a half. No, by this point, I'd be looking to get out of the trade already by, you know, this fourth bar. That's what I'm looking to get out. I'm not looking for it to, you know, to be trading a stacked imbalance at 155 and, and you know, two, you know, three o'clock. I'm still in this trade and it's, it's just going sideways on me. So you got this Delta scalper giving you this buy here at uh, 239. You get a nice little move up here. This bar I found could be quite bearish. Unfortunately, like this stacked imbalance, it's happening just on the other side of the opening price. This yellow orange line. It's supposed to be, it says orange, but actually it looks yellow on my screen. I find this bar very bearish and looking for the market to sell off. It doesn't. It gets back down to the opening price. Again, you know, you, that's why you see all these, you know, you get a lot of these signals, right? Or, and you're just hanging around, you know, this, the opening price. When you understand that, you know, opening prices is, is a magnet for, you know, directionless days, then you, 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 it makes it a lot easier to understand why, you know, you're not getting many moves here. Like this is a bullish sign. Yeah. Does it rally? Yeah. A little bit. This is a bearish bar. Does it sell off? Yeah. It sells off back to the opening price. And then here, at least now you're getting, <coughs> you know, some multiple imbalances. You got one, two, three. Now you're coming into the cash close though three o'clock right here that's why you got this heavy volume in here five thousand that's selling a balance you come right back with a nice buying imbalance of 2400 um you know when you're trading in a tight range right you're not gonna i don't know um i prefer to break out of the range and take the trades in the direction as you're moving outside rather than try and fade it in the move back in you know like this trade here to here you know back here up to there back down uh, i'm really looking for the move away from you know, your, your value area, so to speak, you know, on, on the volume profile, you know, this is what it looked like here. You know, this is how quiet the day was 59 and a half to 68 and three quarters. So not even 10 points. You know, your port of control is just down here, 62. Um, but again, you know, it, it's hard to get excited when you're trading inside of your value area. I'd, I'd much rather see us start rallying above 66, 66 and a half for a breakout. You know, you're not getting it right now in the evening session. So, you know, any moves that you're going to get, you know, on, on one of these narrow range days, you know, these days with not much going on, um, you know, again, it's, it's, it's easy to get excited on a trade that, you know, when you're breaking out possibly, uh, you know, on the upside rather than try to fade it back in, you know, you guys two different types of trading, right? There's trend traders, there's non-trend traders, 
decide what you are or you know you don't have to choose one or the other i mean you could use both strategies right that's why you should have more than one trading strategy in your trading um you know because if you're just trading if all a trend breakout strategy but on a day like today you're not going to get much and you're going to get chopped up and you know if you have a trend fading strategy only you know on trend days you're going to get chopped up as well so you know it's, it's good to have both and you know hopefully you know you could make make money with the two of them together preferably you should have more but uh you know everyone should have sort of a what do i want to call it like a playbook of you know types of trades that they're looking for in different market conditions um so, but anyway you know just really quick in the evening session yeah you, know, you have this low you got a divergence no ratio down in here you got the divergence you got the ratio afterwards this is 122 we'll see if it's going to rally um you, know, you got the delta scalper as well I think it'd be nice if we get a rally but again it's it's kind of quiet it's coming into friday morning right now in europe maybe once the, you know after two o'clock the uh market can start to put in a move what's the other the other two markets i looked at were uh, five years and uh bonds but just really quick you know this is the three in a row ratio 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 the red bar the pullback is now it's split into two sessions this is the evening session right now this is the close right here so you got the pullback you got the pullback between the two point of controls and then you got the move higher you know up up to this high at uh 31 and a half eventually you did make you know new highs after that here We're starting to come off a little bit off this high but the important thing was again you know and again yeah, it's one of these things you know do you, are you going to trade it through two sessions you know probably not by this time by four o'clock in the afternoon you know people are tired of trading already for the day but again you can see how it works right one ratio two ratios three ratios the pullback in between you know the red bar you get the pullback between the two point of controls of the uh, second and third bar in here you can see it pulls back down in here and then it makes the move back up you know that's the, that's the three in a row three in a row um again you know just sort of follow up from earlier we had made that high earlier you got the price rejector up here right on the high we sell off come down into this area sort of trade deltas minus a thousand plus a thousand minus two thousand plus two thousand um you know before you get that rally going on up in here you know and, and another way for me oh, another way i, I determine if, if a market is going sideways is this red bar green bar red bar green bar you know when it's alternating in the just in the the bars the bar colors to me that's um you know, also a sign of of a market trying to make up its mind um and then you got bearish ratio you don't have a bullish ratio but you got bearish ratio then bullish ratio it's not till you start moving away that you know it comes it becomes more clearer here um but you know oftentimes you see bearish ratio then bullish ratio then bearish ratio then bullish ratio that's also a sign of a market going sideways um mm, 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 bonds not much really to get too excited about i mean price rejector again so earlier you know today was a nice day for the price rejector in, in the bonds so you had your high here you had your delta negative uh delta on the high remember i was talking about that it came off started coming off nicely here negative delta negative delta negative delta then the strong negative delta here minus 1300 um it keeps going down 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 um you get down to this low area you got you know this bar here you know i thought maybe we get a little bit of a bounce we did and it came right back up and we got a bounce of about two ticks and then came up with uh, a bearish ratio negative delta uh well negative delta in the bar but selling a balance selling a balance next bar another ratio selling a balance um you ended up with positive delta a small one you know you had this buying in here at this uh oh at this 10 level right here aggressive buying 2000 so you had some you know you had aggressive sellers in there still then you came down in here this is the price rejector giving you this buy here um you know it, it's it's one of those things it's you know without this price rejector you probably wouldn't notice that this is going to be a low because you see oh you still got uh negative delta this here is this is the u-turn this black arrow and you know price rejector black arrow you know it, I'm, it's telling me you know possibly this can be a low and we start working our way up here then you get some selling you know then it looks it's just kind of going sideways unfortunately it's not a clear move it's just one of those winding moves again if this is 12 18 you know this is two o'clock here okay it, it's nice to look back at the close here at four o'clock and say oh yeah that was a terrific move 
But it wasn't. It was this was a, a very slow um, period in here. The market's not really doing anything after the cash close. You did get the rally. Obviously, in the evening session, we are trading higher right now. Um, you know, this is the Delta scalper given the sell right here. You get up to your high, you got the uh, divergence, you got the negative Delta next bar Delta scalper um, giving you a sell. And, you know, we're, we're trading about, uh, you know, a few ticks lower right now. But again, you know, this, even though there was a signal in here, you know, for most people, it's, it's going to be hard to pick up on the order flow. Honestly, um, you know, this, I said, you know, that's why I, I, program these these indicators you know the volatiles in suite of indicators and, and the price rejector because it will help me pick up this stuff which you know sometimes you know, on slow days quiet days it's easy to you know start surfing the internet or you know open up facebook on your phone and stuff and if, if you're not really tuned into the market you're going to miss things like that that's why we, i have these uh ideas or not ideas, you know, but these, these ways I trade, you know, coded into these things. I'm not trying to change it. You know, it's just sort of to uh, say not change it. Really what the reason why I have these things coded is to help me. You know, it's, it's a tool. Say, hey, idiot, put down your phone. Start looking at this market. You're getting some signs in here of life of the market possibly starting to rally. Okay, I could take a look. Yeah, I see. Hey, you know, you got this is interesting. You know, this bar you've got, you, know, you got the negative delta, so you got some supportive buying in here. It's not that great, honestly. Ten sixty seven, ten sixty one. But earlier you had two thousand in here, and I know that there's some buying going on in here because you got that imbalance on this on the previous bar. So you know, maybe there's, there's, you, know, you could see that there is buying coming in at this at this area down in here. I said it, it's it's not something that's easy to pick up. You know, honestly, it's one of the problems that you know, I said I deal with a lot of people on order flow and one of the problems that people have is they try to put everything together at once and oftentimes they don't understand everything to put together and so they're sort of you know they got all the pieces to the puzzle but you know they're, they're putting in the wrong pieces they're trying to attach the wrong pieces together you know like those those puzzles you know you, yeah you have the pieces to the puzzle but when you're putting it together you got to put the right piece with the right piece at the right time um you know if you try to put the wrong piece with you know a wrong piece then it's it's not going to work right um so anyway you know we did get this nice little rally up off that uh okay what else it's really quick this is a hundred tick mini dow chart you know this is the baltos transition you see how it's Supposed to pick up the market transitioning from supply to demand or demand to supply you know it just didn't find its low here it gave sort of a false signal stopped out here got the little move here made the low this was a nice high area this is a nice low area you got another one here another one down in here another couple down in there um again it's it's more let me see what else uh i got a chart if i could find it here I forgot which one. I was looking at it earlier. Gold, I think it was. You know, gold had some, been having some nice moves this year, honestly. And this is a one minute chart. This is the Delta Scalper. This is the evening session right now. Um, you know, you're getting some nice little moves again. You know, if you're, if you're, I hate to say, you know, if you're a short term trader, you know, and you know, people come to me and say, hey, I don't have much time to trade. You know, maybe I got, couple hours a day okay well try and find those hours try and find a market that you know has got decent liquidity during the hours you can trade and stick to those hours right say say you you know some people say i, I work a nine to five okay why don't you wake up two hours earlier and watch the buns or something you know or watch the e-minis in the morning before you go to work or something like that you know find something to watch but stick to that time and, you know, be consistent on it. Don't sit, you know, okay, well, I'll watch the Bunds today. Then I'll watch the Nikkei tomorrow. Um, and the next day I'm, I'm looking at the Euro currency. Now you're going it, to, it's nice if you could look at the same thing every day and understand, you know, what you're looking at. And then you could expand into some other markets. Um, but, you know, the gold this morning, gold, get some decent moves here. This was when the number came out. I mean, look at that move. The Delta Scalper gave you the buy, right? before the big pop-up is a one-minute chart 
Now, so that was a decent move there. Again, this trade here failed. Get a little bit of a move here, a little bit of a move here. This one fails. Um, this one fails. Get a little move, you know, failed. A little move here, that one fails. Um, you know, nothing spectacular, but still some decent moves to be had. I mean, if you're only getting, you know, a bunch of trades that you're getting stopped out at small losses, but then you get, you know, like here, right? Let's just, you know, look at that, right? You're getting... Uh, I got the right thing across here. No, it's not working. But you know, say you're getting short here at 13, you know, 49.80, but your stops up here at 13.50, uh, 30. You know, that, that's 50 cents. But you know, if you're getting long here at you know 49, and you're covering it at 50, you know, you're making a buck, right? You know, risk to reward. You know, you're getting short. You know, in here at, uh, you know, 51, 20, you know, you get a little bit of move down here, but, you know, maybe I don't know what that is, 50, 70, 50, 80. Again, here, you get a nice little move there, but you get a quick stop out. I mean, it's fine taking taking the losses. Again, I don't know if you'd be holding this through the number, honestly. You know, any of these, all these employment numbers, right? Today, you had the, uh, the weekly jobless claims. Yeah, now you got a hurricane, right, that just affected... Texas and Louisiana to a smaller extent. Now you got Hurricane Irma, which is going to be hitting Florida this weekend or maybe sooner. I don't. I, I'm not tracking it, but watch these weekly jobless numbers. I think it's going to be pretty volatile. Um, these numbers coming out over the next uh, the next couple of weeks, and you know, keep that in mind. So you know, trade it. Uh, I don't say trade it cautiously, but um, you know, just be. Uh, you know, just be aware of that. You know, you could see some volatility in the jobs numbers. Last thing people are really concerned about is their job when, you know, the house is flooding. So um, this is this is the gold uni Renko chart here. I don't know if you can see that here. And this is the Delta Scalper. So nice little move here. You know, not much here. This buy started to work out and failed. Uh, you got a little buy here. Um, you know, later here you got a nice sell. And you got a nice buy later in the day. So, you know, it's, it's a move from, you know, 50 and a half up to, you know, 53 and a half, just like this is from 51 and a half down into here at, uh, you know, 49, 49 and a half. So even though you're, you're, you're getting, you know, half a dollar stop outs, but if you're getting moves that are, you know, two or three bucks, four bucks, then, you know, you're risking 0.5 to get back four. You know, that that's what having a good risk to reward ratio is uh, is all about and you know this really quick you know this is the the uni Renko, uh what is this mini Dow again you know it's some terrific moves here you can see here you know getting along at uh, you know 70 you know just call it 80 it's gonna be quick you know and it's up here to your cell at 83 uh, sorry at uh, 830. You know, so that's a 50 cent move, 50 point move, and then back down again, another 50 points. That's how quick, that's 100 points right there in the, in the Dow. So, you know, for, for people like here say, oh, I got long here, right? I, I got, I, I got long at, uh, whoops, I don't know why my crosshairs isn't working properly. Oh, I got long here at uh, 810, but I got stopped out at, uh, you know, 800. So I didn't take this next trade because I just had a loss. Well, you don't take this next trade. It's again from you know 805 all the way up to 840, and then you know people I still get messages. Yeah, I got I got, I got long at 805, and then I got stopped out at break even down here. Well, why why are you getting stopped out at break even here? You know, learn to manage your trade, learn to trail your stop, and get out. You know, while the getting's good. You know, you're 50, 50, uh, you know 40 ticks w into this trade as a winner. You know, even if you give back 20 and get out at 820, you're still ahead. You know, you're still getting four. You're risking, you know, 10 ticks to get back, you know, 20, 25 ticks. You know, here you're getting in some nice moves. And here, even in the evening session, you know, you got a nice little move there and, and starting a little move here. You know, these moves here didn't work out late in the session. It would have been nice to say, hey, there was a nice buy signal down here on this low, but there wasn't. I'm not going to make it up. Um... Anyway, uh, 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 I think that's about it. I, mean, I could show you a, a NASDAQ chart really quick. 
again, UniRenko chart. The reason why I'm showing this because you know people have been messaging me. Hey, can I use it with the UniRenko chart? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, you're getting some cells, some decent cells here, here, a little buy here. This cell failed, this cell here failed. Fine. You know, you got a nice little buy there. A little bit of a move here before it went back up. This one failed. A little bit of a move there. This one, yeah, I would have stopped you out, I think. Yeah, this is pre-cash in here. This is right after the cash. Got a little move up, came down, and then made the move. These are the moves I hate. You know, where it sort of starts moving up, ticks down, and then makes the move. You know, but that's that's trading. Um, you know, that's how those things go. But anyway, um, you know, we'll end this. So I'll end this video for now. And, uh, you know, see how things come shape up on Friday. So have, uh, have a great uh, Friday and a great weekend if I, I don't hear from me. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, forgot. Uh, you know, if you want to learn more about order flow, go to my website, Order Flows. If you want to learn more about Delta Scalper, go to Delta Scalper. If, uh, you know, you really want, if you want to be alerted to any new videos I put out, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Click the little red button below that, or to the side down here. It says subscribe. And, uh, you know, I try to get videos out on a fairly regular basis. It's time permitting. And I don't want to say it's, you know, market permitting, but mostly time permitting. There's always something in some market to talk about, you know, but I try to talk about the same markets every day. You know, I'm not trying to pull stuff up and say, you know, oh, you know, only show you the great looking charts. I, I pretty much stick to bonds, fives, um, minis, euro currency, uh, you know, the, the major contracts, the main contracts. I do talk about some of the smaller ones once in a while, but again, you know, I, I try to be consistent in the markets. There's no point in, you know, saying, you know, only showing you the perfect charts of the day, um, you know, because you know, you're not going to really learn, you, you know, part of learning is, is going through, you know, bad market conditions, you know, so I, I see, you know, I said, I've been trading for, you know, I've been involved in trading since 1994 when I was on the trading floor on the CME and I really, I've traded through every, I don't say every possible, but a lot of different conditions, obviously, um, you know, the, the Russian crisis, the Asian financial crisis, uh, SARS, you know, the LT, oh, I, was, I can't remember it now, um, long-term capital management, LTCM, you know, that big debacle that went on and really affected the market, Nick Leeson, um, you know, people never, you know, before the Asian financial crisis, nobody knew about Hang Seng, you know, outside of Asia. And then, you know, day after the financial crisis, Asia financial crisis back in the nineties happened, everyone would be calling in trading. They'd say, what's the Hang Seng doing? What's the Hang Seng doing? You know, it was funny. It's a joke, you know, like hey, last week, you guys never cared. Now everyone cares about it. Um, you know, obviously, you know, I've been through the tsunamis in Japan, you know, trading that, um, you know, nine 11 was a big thing. You know, I've seen a lot of different market conditions. I'm not saying I saw every market condition. Um, you know, I sort of wish I was born a little bit earlier, but then I'd be much older now. But I would have been like to, to trade these markets back in the 70s, actually, you know, during the great grain embargo with uh, where Russia was uh, pulling a fast one on the U.S. Um, you know, I, I've, I've, you know if, if I could go back in time, you know, I'd sort of pick out the times when I I'd, I'd wish I was trading Again, um, you know, back, you know, in like in the 70s, there's some great, uh, great times to be trading. But anyway, guys, you know, I'm just talking nonsense. Have a, have a great day and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Bye bye.